So Swift Playgrounds 4 was released like three years ago. And it was the first time that Apple allowed us to build and publish apps to the App Store from an iPad. Now, I thought at the time that this was a significant indication from Apple that they were working towards bringing professional workflows to this, this, uh, this device. I wanted to take a look and a deep, deeper dive and just a discussion around Swift Playgrounds as it stands in 2025. Swift Playgrounds is a great entry into Swift and Swift UI in particular. It is a good product. And I think Apple knows its place with Swift Playgrounds is at that early developer stage, peaking curiosity and in the university school setting, right? They have Swift Playgrounds Challenge every year where they have school-aged students submit apps through the Swift Playgrounds app to be considered by Apple in this contest. And winners from this contest are invited to WWDC, which is a huge honor for those developers and a huge inspiration to other young uh, developers out there who would love to have that experience, right? Building apps in Swift Playgrounds has its place. And I think it's important to keep in mind that Apple wants Swift Playgrounds to be a lightweight, easy to use, easily accessible app for that purpose, which is fine, that's fine. That's understandable and I understand why over the last few years, Swift Playgrounds really has kind of stagnated. We haven't seen any advancements. We haven't seen Apple bring any more capabilities to it. You still can't build an app that can do background refresh. You can't add Game Center in integration. You can't add weather kit apps. You can't add the most common way to monetize an app, which is in-app purchases or subscriptions. All of these things cannot be done on Swift Playgrounds. And somewhat frustratingly, you can't really take a Swift Playgrounds project and with one click convert it into an Xcode project to add those capabilities later. You have to copy each file one by one into a new Xcode project if you really want to bring that prototype from your, your prototype to Playground stage into an Xcode project. It just should be, you know, Apple makes both of these things. There should be a conversion kit to convert a Swift Playgrounds project into an Xcode project. That, I digress. Swift Playgrounds, serves its purpose, and I think it's still a good app if you are just starting out or if you just want to tinker with Swift or Swift UI. That brings me to the next question. Where is Xcode for the iPad? Because we have recently seen that Apple does want to bring professional workflows to this device. They've released Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. There are other two main professional apps on the iPad recently, but they have not brought Xcode. So why? Why haven't they brought it? Because, you know, the the iPad, it has the same internals basically as a computer, right? From a technical standpoint, the iPad should be able to run Xcode, no problem. So then why haven't they done this? Why can't they give us Xcode on the iPad? And I think it's there, there's two real things that I hear co commonly in the forums that I read and, and the internet about why this hasn't happened. First one is, is really people think that it will cannibalize the Mac sales because developers and programmers all are buying Macs for uh, Xcode. And while I, I get that point, I don't think it's the reason because even myself, who is a hobbyist developer, I would still have a Mac. I would 100% I would prefer to use a Mac over an iPad. But there are use cases for the iPad for programming where I think it would be useful to have it as a secondary device to be able to seamlessly work on the same project if I want to take my iPad on an airplane or something, right? And I don't want to carry the Mac around with me. But for whatever reason, there is a group of people out there who think that there's going to be a cannibalization of Mac sales. And that's the reason Apple is just locking it behind the Mac because they want to sell more Macs. People are going to buy Macs anyway. So I don't think that's the reason. I think the real reason that we have not seen Xcode on an iPad is a user experience problem. And you can see this a little bit in Swift Playgrounds because Swift Playgrounds is a very lightweight app. It's very easy, it's very simple, but there are some user, uh, user experience things that are just kind of like, well, that's weird. One of the ones is like, I think in Swift Playgrounds to auto-complete a line, you have to press enter, 
but in the Mac, you press tab, I believe, or something like that. But like there are other weird user experience things that are just different. So I think that the reason that Apple has not chosen to bring Xcode to the iPad is because they have not met their internal criteria for what the user experience of an Xcode product on the iPad would look like. Are they gonna get there? I mean, there's a lot of smart people that work at Apple. I think that they know that this is something that people have asked for. They know that, that people want to develop apps for the App Store and bringing more surfaces for people to do that is a good thing for them in the long run. I'm sure they are working on it. My hunch is that they just have not made a product that has the user experience that they want for the future of development on the iPad. Now, I don't know if that's gonna be like, you know, who knows, maybe Apple will come out with a new IDE for iPad and Mac at the same time, and it will be something different, like an X Xcode Reborn or something, right? Not Xcode as we know it today, but uh, some future version of Apple's development software. That's a big overhaul. I, I don't know if that's gonna be the thing that happens. Uh, it would be, it surely would be interesting to see. I, I would love to see the discussions around this, the internal Apple discussions, because it is, to me, one of the key places where Apple could go to drive more iPad sales. I think a lot of developers out there would use an iPad as a secondary device if they could work on the same projects on their iPad that they have on their Mac. I don't know, that's just me. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.